Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I have been working on today's video for the past two-ish weeks because my Kindle Unlimited subscription is, it was ending. Um, I had two free months because of this promo that Amazon is doing. If you haven't already done this promo for two free months of KU, I have a link to it down below. But I decided to binge on a bunch of smut because my subscription was ending and it was quite a trip to be just exclusively reading smut novellas because usually I kind of switch off from regular sized books to smut to back to regular sized books. I'm a smut lover. I have these specific authors that I pretty much will read anytime they drop something and they release when I need some good smut, some good quick steamy smut. Um, but for this video I decided to explore more of my options because there are pretty much a million of them on Amazon and I actually ended up finding some really good authors. Not a lot of them but I did find a, some to fall in love with. So pretty much for the past two weeks I've been frantically trying to get through all these smutty novellas. I might have had to turn on airplane mode on my Kindle by the time my subscription ended because I wasn't finished with this one book. Hopefully I'm not the only one who does that to kind of cheat the system, but for this video I'm going to be talking about the 14 novellas that I read, the 10 authors that wrote them. If you love smut, if you love steamy novellas, this video is perfect for you. So the first author that I read was Izzy Slam. I actually read two novellas from her. Well the second one was a box set, but the total number of pages I think still added up to being like a novella. This author I actually discovered because of my friend Lisa, remarkably Lisa. She is my fellow smut reader, fellow smut fan. Um, she loves to read the dirty stuff, which is probably why we're friends. But she was the one who introduced me to this author, to Izzy Slam. Um, and I read Izzy like last year, I think, because of Lisa, but totally forgot about it and didn't even add it to my Goodreads because I don't usually, well, I forget to add all the smut that I read onto my Goodreads. If you've never read Izzy Slam, um, all I can say is that they are very, very filthy. Um, some of them are extremely taboo. One of the ones that I read was like just out there. They're not quite as romantic as the smutty novellas that I'm used to reading from, which is why she's not like a favorite of mine and I didn't really rate these books very high. But if you want to read about very filthy sex in your novellas, she is a very good one. So the first novella that I read from Izzy Slam was Claimed by the Beast. And no, this is not paranormal romance, it's just contemporary romance. This one I ended up giving two stars, maybe three stars, but this one it goes back to the whole not very romantic thing because when I read novellas I love love at first sight from main characters just because it's a short book, you don't have that much time to develop anything. I don't really read these smutty novellas for plot so just give me a hero who is over the top, and obsessed with the heroine, love with her from the very first page. Sadly, this hero Slade, um, while he is over the top and obsessive and alpha, it's not really in the most um, loving way. It's more like, oh, she trespassed onto my property. This means she's my property now and she belongs to me and I'll have her and I'll take her. There's not really any mention of love, um, although it is still very, very hot. That part of the novella is still delivers beautifully, not gonna lie. The second book that I read from Izzy Slam, um, I honestly don't even want to say this title because it's freaking awful, but it is called Pa's Dirty Little Secret. This one is the box set one and as you can tell from this <laughs> god awful title, it is a forbidden taboo erotic novella. Despite this title, I did like this one more than Claimed by the Beast, um, just because it was very unconventional, very different, and not just because of the whole sleeping with the stepdad kind of thing. This one pretty much has it all. It's dirty, it's taboo, um, there is breeding, she does become pregnant. Like the whole barefoot and pregnant thing, this is it. She becomes a bit of an escort to make money for her and her stepdad. So it's pretty much like a he's the man of the house, so 
she needs to provide for his needs. It's just wild, over the top, nothing like I expected, but in a good way. But again, there's not really much of a romance. So if you're reading this one, you're pretty much reading for the filth, nothing else really. It also says that it's historical, and I guess it kind of is in like a backwoods country America kind of way like these people are very very poor and they ride wagons and horses and trade and sell milk or whatever it's weird I did look through a couple of Izzy Slam's other books and there's another title that's just as bad as this one. That one is called Bad Granddaddy and I'm so scared to even try to read that one. And then the next author that I read, I read two books from her as well. Her name is Isla Chu. I was actually looking really hard to finding authors of color, smutty authors of color, and then I found Isla Chu, who is an Asian American smutty author. I was so excited to read her because she had Asian characters, but I am so devastated that I did not like these two that I read from her. I gave both of them two stars. I was so disappointed. I mean, for one thing, it's really hard to find authors of color for smutty novellas, mainly because a lot of them write under pen names and don't actually have author photos of them. So you literally don't know who you're reading. For Isla Chu, I was really, really excited to read her. The first one that I read is called His Sweet Little Addiction. Oh, I forgot to mention, most of these novellas are on KU, except for this author, Isla Chu, which is which sucks, and the Katie Robert one that I'll be talking in a little bit. But Isla Chu, I am very disappointed, was not on KU, but she did have two free books, so I grabbed them and I read them. His Sweet Little Addiction is a second chance romance, one of my favorite tropes, but this one just did not work for me, mainly because of a hero who is insane. He takes over the top and obsessed to a whole new level. Um, basically he just did not care what she even thought. He just wanted her back and he would do anything to have her back in his life. Sean was just insanely controlling and obsessive that it turned out to me not that attractive anymore, mainly because she continuously told him no, that she didn't want to be back with him, she didn't want to sleep with him again. She said no multiple times, but he didn't listen. So that was a turn off and very disappointing. And then the second novella that I read from Isla Chu was Office Hours, which is a student um, professor romance. And again, this hero was kind of the same way as the first one that I read, insanely controlling, possessive, except that this time there's blackmail involved. This heroine gets caught cheating by plagiarizing her paper and the hero, the professor, blackmails her into being with him and sleeping with him so that he won't report her and get her expelled from school. So that was very um, icky to say the least. Not romantic at all, at least in my eyes. I mean, when I read novellas, I already like hold my suspension of disbelief like incredibly hard, right? But these were just too much and not okay to me. Um, and the most disappointing thing though was the fact that the smut, the actual steamy scenes, they weren't good. Like the one thing that I could have counted on when I read smutty novellas is the smut and this just wasn't there. Um, she does a really good lead up to the actual sex scenes but the actual act of it, it's like two seconds. Once they get started, it is like already over. So the foreplay is good, but then the actual act, it's like in, out, done. So these two novellas from Isla Chu are the free ones from her. Hopefully they're still free by the time I post this video. If anyone ever sees my links in my description, I always say if something is free or on sale, hopefully that helps you out. This author does have another novella that I was kind of interested in. It's K-pop related, but I'm really scared to read another book from her because based on these two books that I've read from her, feels like she has a pattern and this pattern is not something that I'm a fan of. And then of course I had to read Ella Good even though she's like a hit or miss author for me. I still always end up reading her new releases. This one is called Against the Rules and while it's not a new favorite, I did enjoy reading it. It was really cute, really sweet, um, very ridiculous, and even at times it was kind of funny. This one is an office romance. The heroine is the CEO Hero's new personal assistant. Um, and he is 
is obviously in love with her at first sight. He will do anything to have her as his wife, wooing her like crazy, and she rejects him twice. She actually like smacks his face twice. The main reason why this novella is pretty fun is that with the hero being the boss he can't make the first move like the one loophole I guess in their company handbook is that the person who is in the lower um, employee standing gets to make the move first or something like that so he does everything he can to make her fall in love with him without actually like asking her out on a date. He even wears this bright pink suit um, to work because she told him like offhandedly that pink was her favorite color and of course that means to dress up in the love of your life's favorite color and just shock the whole office. This one again it's not a favorite but I still liked it so I give it three stars. This next author that I read is one of my new favorites of the year. I love her so much and that is Alexandria House. Her Them Boy series was a recommendation for my friend Charles, books on stereo, and I love the series so so much. There are three novellas in the Them Boy series, um, each about a different brother, and they're all black romances. The first book is called Set, and each title is named after the brother that the book is about. The main characters are both single parents, they're both older main characters, they're around 40. They knew each other in high school, and Set actually had a crush on the heroine, Karima, back then, um, but he was the bad boy, she was the good girl, and he just never thought that he was good enough for her. But now they reunite 20 years later at their 20 year reunion, and then this affair just springs from there. This novella was just so romantic, so sweet. I love this one, I give it five stars. I mean, the whole him having a crush on her back in high school, totally got to me. And Set was just so loving and worshipful of Karima. I love seeing that in novellas. He would literally do anything for his heroine and I found that after reading a couple more books from Alexandria House, this is her type of hero. So obviously how can I not be a huge fan of hers now? Loving heroes who are all about the heroine, who are all in for the heroine, is like kryptonite for me so I love this book, I love this series, it was fantastic and also the steam is on fire, it is so hot, very filthy, loved it. But set book one is definitely my favorite of the three. The second book is called Ja, I gave this one four stars and this heroine is actually the best friend of the first book's heroine. Again older main characters, they're both over 40. The thing is that Trisha actually was in a relationship when she started sleeping with Ja, but she was at the point during the relationship when she wanted out and just didn't know how to go about that because she'd been with this guy for years and years, but he treated her horribly, um, cheated on her multiple times. So she wanted out, but in the meantime, she found Ja and slowly started to fall for him and he for her. It's a little bit angsty with this whole like cheating thing, um, but Ja is just so wonderful with Trisha. And Ja is also a lot more lighthearted than Set was. Um, ja is definitely the jokester of the family. He's so great. Also they're all like huge. I think they're all six and a half feet. Gigantic gorgeous black men. The steam once again is fantastic. Love a worshipping hero who just revels in the heroine's body. Like Ja loves Trisha curves and all. She is just gorgeous to him. And then the third and last book is called Shu and it was it kind of took a different turn than I expected because it's a lot more serious and intense than the first two books. Still steamy but it does deal with serious and darker issues. But Shu is the quietest of three brothers. He doesn't reach out to them as much as they reach out to him. He keeps to himself until the heroine enters his life. Um, it's actually an age gap romance so while he's around 40 she is like mid-20s. She is actually the nurse for his sick father. Shu and his brothers all have a very complicated relationship with their father because he was abusive to them growing up. So there's a lot of complicated feelings for these brothers and especially Shu watching their father on his deathbed. And this whole story arc with their father culminates in this third and final book. But Denver and Shu have a very intense relationship. It's definitely not as fast and quick as the first two novellas, but it's just as strong and just as wonderful. Shu is yet another Mitchell brother who will do anything for his heroine, and he actually does do something pretty intense towards the end of the novella. These two are just very 
broken characters who find love and solace with each other. And even though I did really enjoy their story, I give this one four stars. Um, I feel like with all these complicated layers to both of their stories. It probably would have been better if it wasn't a novella and more full length, but still I love all three of these novellas. I love these three Mitchell brothers and their heroines. I was so hooked onto these novellas that I finished all three of them pretty much within a day. I almost wish that I was able to get the audiobooks because my library did have them, but I would have had to put them on hold for way too long and I just was too impatient and just downloaded them off of Kindle Unlimited, and I'm just so, so glad I did. And then the next novella that I read was Meant to Be by Lucy Darling. I've been wanting to read Lucy Darling for a while. I actually downloaded her months ago and tried to read it, but I just could not get into it. But I have friends who really love her, and she's always up there with Alexa Riley, Ella Good, Mink, those kinds of smutty novella authors. So I thought I would give her another try. Um, so I read Meant to Be, which is book two in a series. I think book one was the one that I tried to get into and just couldn't, so I thought I'd skip that. But sadly, I didn't love Meant to Be all that much. I gave it three stars. It's a friends to lovers romance, and even though I love friends to lovers, the story was just kind of boring to me. They're both virgins, they're both in love with each other but just haven't told each other yet. They pretend to be fake fiancés for a reason that I don't remember. I honestly don't know why I didn't love it more. It was just overly sweet, I guess, that I got really tired of it. The steam itself wasn't all that memorable or exciting, but I guess since I'm used to reading the more filthy taboo stuff, this normal sweet stuff just doesn't do it for me anymore. Still, it wasn't bad. I did give it three stars. Um, I'm just not sure that I am in too much of a hurry to read more from Lucy Darling. Next, I read Yes Daddy by Danny Wyatt, and this one I've actually been wanting to read for a while since the KU Weekend Readathon last year. It's a smutty novella with a mafia hero, age gap, daddy cake, perfect for me. But sadly I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. I gave this one three stars. I actually expected it to be a bit darker than it actually was because the hero is literally a mafia like head boss. But still the whole age gap thing, the daddy king was hot, lots of dirty talk. Although I will admit I'm not a big fan of daddy king spilling outside of the bedroom, which I think this book did. So that probably was why I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. And again, I feel like the whole mafia thing could have been explored a bit more. There is some drama involved because of like these other people, but it's very, very shallowly written, which I mean, I can't expect a lot more from a short novella, but still I did wish that we got a darker side to this hero and the story. They actually meet during a stormy, rainy night when Vito crashes into her with his car. No one got hurt that badly, but she was running away from this job interview. She thought it was a normal job interview, but it turned out to be an interview for prostitution, so she ran out of there and crashed into Vito's car. And then our mafia hero is very much all in with this heroine, even though he does try to keep his mafia side a secret from her. It is still very hot and very sweet, so if you do like Daddy Kink novellas, definitely try this one. And then I read another Lisa recommendation because she always has the dirty and filthy ones, and this one is The Chambermaid number two by Saber Vale. I read the first one a couple months ago. It was really hot, but not much to the story, and it did leave the ending open-ended, so I'm not surprised that we get this sequel. So in The Chambermaid number one, the heroine, the chambermaid, is pretty much a toy for the household that she's hired into, but by the end of it, she's found a higher paying job for another household, for another man of the house, House, though she still will be giving her body to him, but she loves it. She does enjoy being used by people. And then the sequel is about her life in this new household, um, and then eventually leaving that household to become a prostitute, a very wealthy and well-known, renowned prostitute. We do get a little bit more romance in the sequel because they're was barely any in the first one. There's not much to say about this sequel. It is just as hot as the first novella. It's a very different and unconventional kind of historical smutty novella. And then the next novella that I read is Stocking Stuffers by Erin McLellan. This one is a new, new to me author. It's a recommendation from a friend on Instagram and I loved it. It's the longest novella of all the novellas that I read. It's around 150 pages whereas everything else was 100 
100 or less. It is definitely a Christmas in July kind of read with a heroine, a very grumpy heroine who is bi and hates Christmas. The hero, on the other hand, is so wholesome, blushes when the heroine says some dirty things, is a huge romantic, and he loves Christmas. So he's trying to do his best to make Christmas special for her and make her not be miserable during their time snowed in in this bed and breakfast. And yes, it is a stuck together inside during a snowstorm kind of romance. Sasha, our heroine, our Christmas hater, is a sex toy seller and she's currently selling to a romance book club on Christmas Eve. Perry, the hero who is actually a former member of this romance book club, he stops by the bed and breakfast um, as a little surprise. And there's definitely a very intense connection even from the moment that they meet eyes. It's just a really lovely and wonderful romance, very sex positive. The heroine knows what it is she wants and she kind of guides our blushing beta hero in bed and they use a lot of the sex toys that she brought with her. It's also so perfectly Christmassy so if you're in the mood for Christmas in July definitely pick this one up. Erin McLellan's writing is fantastic. I'm so glad I finally read her. Um, she actually does have a couple other holiday themed novellas in the series in the So Over the Holidays novellas. The second one is Valentine's Day and then the third one coincidentally is for 4th of July. So maybe I'll read it this weekend for 4th of July. We'll see. This next money novella is from Jessica Kane because how can I not make a smutty novella video without Jessa Kane, who is pretty much my favorite. I was actually really, really hoping that she would release something while I was reading all of these novellas because she released um, two novellas back in May and I was really, really hoping she would come out with something in June and she finally did at the end of the month. And this one is called Daddy's Worst Nightmare and I can't say that it's a new favorite of mine from Jessa Kane, but it was still fun to read. This one actually has a really cute premise that I was very very into. The main characters meet as little kids. He is on the streets begging for money and food and the heroine who is a young young girl is the only one who offers to help him. She gives him her orange and from then he's never forgotten her. He's pretty much built his life for her from that. He's built a criminal empire and he's been her protector all these years up until now that she's finally 18. It is a little awkward about the things that he said he's done while she was growing up, but I'm just gonna choose to ignore them. It's quick and it's hot, not much for plot, which is, you know, your typical Jessica Kane novella. I gave this one three stars. It definitely could have been better. Um, but I was just really glad that Jessica Kane finally released something by the end of June, not only so that I could read it, but also so I could include it in this video. And then the latest novella that I read is one that's sadly not on KU and it's not even out yet, but I knew I had to include it in this video as soon as I got the arc, and that is Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert. This novella is the second book in the Touch of Taboo series. Book one was Your Dad Will Do, which I loved. That one is a falling for your ex-boyfriend's, ex-fiance's dad. The second book is completely unrelated, but it's about a married couple, a man and wife who finally includes the husband's best friend in the bedroom. So it's a threesome romance, a menage, and it definitely turns into the polyamory direction. There's definitely some sword crossing here um, because both the husband and wife are attracted to the best friend. This one is yet another Christmas in July kind of novella. We have our three main characters who go on their annual Christmas trip together, but this year they're doing something a little bit differently. And instead of their typical gift, they're gifting um, the wife to the best friend. This one was hot. Katie Robert always writes really steamy stuff. I mean, Your Dad Will Do was top notch. And the second book is just as filthy and just as steamy. I didn't love it quite as much as Your Dad Will Do though, but it's still another fantastically steamy installment in this taboo series. I mean, these three people have been fantasizing about each other for a very, very long time. So there's a lot of pent up steam, pent up tension and chemistry that finally explodes this Christmas. I honestly wasn't sure if this novella would turn into the polyamory side like would they include him even after Christmas is over. So that was really fun to explore. I mean I really loved our married couple who are so in love, who are so confident 
and trusting of their love for each other. They were all just really well-rounded characters, which is really impressive for a short novella. I'm just really happy that I got the arc, that I was able to include this book, this novella, with my smutty novella binge. They were all a lot of fun to read, but I think I'm ready for some plot in my books now. My favorites would definitely have to be the Them Boy series by Alexandria House and the Stocking Stuffers by Erin McLellan. The steamiest though, like the best smut, um, would have to go to Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert or either of the Izzy Slam books. So yeah, smut is great. If you need new smutty authors to read, try any of these. If you have any of your favorites, let me know. I will probably join KU again sometime, mainly just to read smutty novellas. Links for all of these books will be in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!